want to talk just a little bit about the actual food industry in America and its domination over politics. Um, because again, there's this confluence, sometimes these things get talked about separately, and I think that that's a mistake. Uh, economic power creates political power. They're not two different things. Um, so the corporate consolidation in the food industry uh, enables, oh, pizza, uh, <laughs> ena enables um, more and more control, lobbying power, um, both by these corporations and by uh, the trade associations that represent, that quote, represent the soybean industry, the meat packing industry, the chicken industry. Uh, well, who controls the trade associations? Again, it's these handful of large corporations that are dominating the agenda uh, for that. So, you know, in, in our food system, you know, I want to give you one example of the kind of lobbying power. Um, there are many examples, but one example is the chicken industry, which I've researched extensively, uh, much to my dismay. Um, <laughs> the figure I gave you earlier of 90 birds per minute going down the assembly line, does anybody know what the number is now? Okay, good, I get to surprise you. 140 birds a minute. Now that's, that's actually um, for the, that's the mainstream chicken factory. There's actually a pilot pro well, it's beyond pilot program. It's now kind of becoming more mainstreamed. Uh, there's a program that now allows these chicken facilities to run at 175 birds a minute. Now this is insane. <laughs> I can't even imagine anything going by me that speed without me just getting dizzy immediately, uh, never mind being able to actually work on that. So you might have a couple workers at one station. They might be handling, oh, only 50 or 60 birds a minute. Or in some places, they're cutting a bone off, so it's 30 birds a minute. Um, or t you know, maybe it gets down to 25. That's a really relaxing pace, right? I've interviewed chicken workers who are hanging chickens 50 birds a minute all day long. Um, how did this happen? This happened through lobbying power. This happened through the economic and political power and lobbying power of the chicken industry and the complacence and compliance of, um, of politicians and heads of agencies. So the Poultry Council, the Nation National Chicken Council lobbies Congress and over time, and this happens, by the way, under both Democrats and Republicans, maybe a little slower under Democrats, but it still happens. Um, they were able to get these line speeds increased. At the same time, they've changed, they've transformed the food safety system for chicken, and they're doing it in pork as well and in other meats. Um, they, they've transformed it to, to where uh, there are hardly any actual food safety inspectors in, along the line anymore. So they're now in labs, they're looking over company records. More and more, the companies are self-inspecting. So they have workers <laughs> in charge of inspection, of food safety inspection. Um, and workers who do not get very much training, they may or may not be able to see what they're supposed to see, uh, who obviously are facing all kinds of pressure and intimidation by their employer. I mean, this isn't, you know, this is an, kind of a no-brainer. I mean, it's like, it's not gonna work well, <laughs> right? Um, so, you know, is it any wonder that we're seeing, you know, tens of millions of food illnesses every year in America, for instance, you know, salmonella, bacteria poisonings uh, across the country. And, you know, I actually just finished a big report looking at some of this stuff that will be out soon, and it's just, it's positively gruesome just reading through some of these government inspection reports and seeing what happens inside America's chicken factories. And again, all of this happens because of economics and politics, because of that power that they've accrued, excuse me, to, uh, to lobby Congress and to lobby the government agencies. Um, there's a constant, of course, also revolving door between industry and government. And that makes the lobbying that much easier. You know, if you've got former industry executives or industry employees in the government agencies who understand <laughs> What's that play? They, you know, they understand the industry. Great, you know. So that means this is going to make it that much easier. So, you know, research shows this happening all the time, and of course, uh, you know, stunningly, it's happening even more under the Trump administration. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, the swamp has gotten even swampier, not just at those high levels that we hear about, but at all these kind of lower or mid-level areas where 
You have tons of appointments happening that we never hear about uh, in lower levels of, of these agencies um, where these are people who worked in industry. And there's example after example of this happening. And, and then we have just the descaling of inspection and enforcement across the board. So, you know, one of the things that happens when Trump you know, unveils his, his budget blueprint and all this is like 20% cuts in these different government agencies. What that means is fewer inspectors um, across America, whether it's worker safety or food safety, health safety, um, you know, or ensuring that the occasional good rule on farm workers getting shade and water actually gets enforced, right? The laws are meaningless if they're not enforced. So, you know, the food industry, you know, just to give you one example, in, in 2008, spent $356 million in campaign contributions, mostly two-thirds to Republicans, but some to Democrats. In 2015, they spent $132 million on lobbying on state governments uh, and federal governments around the country. So this is what's behind our food system. Thank you.